Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 699 of the Juicebox Podcast. I recorded this episode many months ago and enjoyed the conversation thoroughly. Just recently, I put an edit on the show, taking out the noises and stuff like that, putting in the ads, etc. Enjoyed it again. And yet, I have no idea how to explain it to you. So I'm just going to tell you that this is Carly. She has type 1 diabetes, and I think you're going to love this episode. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you're a U.S. resident who has type 1 diabetes or is the caregiver of someone with type 1, I really hope you'll go to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box, join the registry, take the survey. The survey is very short. It will be easy to do. And um, your answers help people living with type 1 diabetes. It's absolutely anonymous and completely HIPAA compliant. T1DExchange.org forward slash juice box. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by Touched by Type 1. Head to touchedbytype1.org, find them on Facebook and Instagram, and see what they're up to. Touchedbytype1.org. The podcast is also sponsored by Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor. You can find out more about Dexcom and perhaps get a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6 by going to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also sponsored today by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. This is the meter my daughter carries. It's astounding. I love it. It really is the best meter I've ever used contournext.com forward slash juice box. It fits nicely in your hand and in your pocket, and it's super accurate. That's pretty much all you need to know, but I'll probably tell you more later anyway. Hi, my name is Carly. I'm 25 years old, and I'm from Ontario, Canada, and I've been a type 1 diabetic since 2003. Um, I was six years old when I was diagnosed, so I've been a diabetic for over 18 years now. Wow. It was like 16, 17 years ago? Uh, right yeah, now. I'm, I'm bad at math too. Every oh. time I listen to you talk about math on the podcast, I'm like, yo, I can relate. <laughs> well, we can do it together. Hold on. 2003. <laughs> I would add 10 to that to make it 2013. If you had another 10, you go past where you are now. So maybe, mm, eight, yep. maybe it's 18 years. Yeah, I think it is 18 years about. Right. So yeah. It, math is easy. <laughs> I, I'm so bad at math. <laughs> There are some things that pop into my head immediately and others that don't. And uh, I've yeah. I've long since stopped wondering why that is. <laughs> it's not slowing me down anymore. Um, okay, so you're only 25. That seems young. Yeah. Uh, to me. Yeah. You don't feel young, do you? So I joke around with my friends a lot. I always go, I'm so old. And they're like, you're not old, you're 25. And I'm like, but why does my back hurt already? You know, like I, I'm achy. <laughs> Who are your friends? How old are your friends? All my friends are the same age as me. I have some friends that are older. Uh, my my now husband, I got married last month. He's older than me. He's he's thirty two. So wow. I I'm, I, can't, I guess I can't complain that I'm old when he's seven years older than me. <laughs> Where did you meet him in the pharmacy, looking for something to rub on your back? <laughs> no, not even. Um, kind of weird. Um, I we both worked at a movie theater. Um, and he was actually my manager. So. Um, I met him through through the movie theater, and yeah, we've movie been theater. together. Since. You're movie theater people. Yeah, <laughs> popping the popcorn, watching yeah. the movies. <laughs> My wife is a movie theater person. Oh, really? That's where I, I didn't her. know that. That's cool. Yeah. Oh no way! I had friends. How that, funny! I had friends that worked at a movie theater. I mm-hmm. got I got my brother a job at the movie theater. And then Great. during the summers, you'd kind of hang out there in the lobby when they weren't working. Mm-hmm. And then oh, one funny. day, one of the managers came back from some like island vacation with their hair braided and very tan. And I, uh, <laughs> I made a clear decision in my mind to have sex with that person. And now <laughs> she is downstairs in my dining room working on stuff for her job. 
That's amazing. <laughs> I love that too. Cause uh, it's funny that you say that you're friends with the people that work in the theater. Cause like all of my close, like most of my very close friends now are all people that I worked with or people that I worked with and their friends. Like it's like a big circle of friends and we're all super close, even though the majority of us don't even work at the movie theater anymore. <laughs> so Only adults like, from when I'm young, from when I was that young that I still see socially are all people who worked at that movie theater. I think, I think like cool people work at movie theaters oh, I don't and I might be just saying that cause I worked there, but yeah, Carly, I'm not certain that my friends are cool, but um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think one of them <laughs> listens to this and I mean, I think, he oh, knows. No. I think he knows he's not cool, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. I, should, I shouldn't be boasting that I'm cool. I'm really not cool either. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. So now all this fun talk about movie theaters and my little trip down memory lane just now with my wife um, leaves me forgetting how old you were when you were diagnosed. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let's 18 years ago. Uh, I don't know. How old? I was six. Six. Around six, I think. Yeah, okay. six. All right. Fair enough. Um, in Ontario, uh, is that does that... Um, experience differ greatly or not differ from what you hear people talk about from America and other places? What do you mean? Sorry. Like, but how, like, like your experience being diagnosed, was it oh, similar to what it, you hear about? Pretty, it is similar um, because I kind of went through the same kind of, I hear like commonly where it's like, it, it's very misdiagnosed. And I kind of went through that too, where I had all these symptoms and my parents like took me to the pediatrician and like even at one point my parents would say like we did some research we think it might be diabetes and they're like no it's probably strep throat let's do a throat culture and they swabbed my throat and they're like well she probably just has a virus and so it got to the point where I was very sick at the end of it before my diagnosis so I don't know I think I think they're definitely I'm hoping that like, nowadays it's, it's a lot more known but yeah I kind of went through that with my diagnosis where it was it took a lot it took a long time to get to the oh this is what it is <laughs> 20 years ago doing uh research in ontario what did your mom pull together a consortium of a moose a beaver and like an otter and they <laughs> talked it over over on a, snow, on a snowmobile trying to find i that's funny i actually think about that a lot because like when they're like i looked up stuff i'm like what did you use like was google a thing in 2003 i don't i don't even know because i was six but um i know at one point like before my diagnosis they actually called like a di- like a, like a like a nurse hotline like the like the weekend that I went to the clinic to get mm-hmm. um like a blood test and like they called the hotline the nurse on the hotline told my dad like oh you can bring her in tomorrow like there's a snowstorm so don't go today go tomorrow and, and my mom was like sorry did your mom like push back oh yeah my mom was like uh no I'm taking her today because the thing that drove her to take me in was that I was six and my brother was like a baby at the time so she lifted me over his baby gate. And like, I was so weak that like my eyes kind of rolled back into my head and she was like, okay, no, we're not waiting till tomorrow. I'm going right now. No, we're not. <laughs> Did she yell to your father? Oh, this one's going to die. Eh? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we sound like. Gets I wouldn't be surprised if I say that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I got Google as officially launching in 1998. Oh, okay. Okay. So Google has been around, but I wonder, you got to wonder like how what kind of how many search options are there back then like definitely not as many as there are now yeah there had but to be I, something to search for and that's exactly I, I i ran into the same problem in 2000 oh gosh 2006 when arden was diagnosed mm-hmm. like we googled like signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes and barely got a return so wow. you know I, by the way uh, we're going to get off this right now but um google incorporated was officially launched in 1998 by larry page and sergi Brin to market Google search, which has become the most used, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, students at Stanford University, developed a search algorithm first known as Backrub in 1996 mm-hmm. with the help of Scott Hassan and Alan Sterenberg. Backrub. Could you imagine? It sounds like. Could you imagine cool. if. It... Go ahead, say it. No, I was going to say, could you imagine if it was still called Backrub? I'm going to Backrub that. <laughs> I'm thinking they're just four creepy, lonely guys at Stanford. Are like, oh. what do I want most in the world? I would like a girl to touch my back. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I think I think you're I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> what never happens to us? Call it that. Uh, anyway. Okay, so uh, 
you don't do you remember much from your diagnosis? Because you have other stuff I to remember, talk about, but I want to hear about this a little. Yeah, I, I actually do have quite like I have like pieces that I remember. I was I ended up staying in the hospital, I think, for like five days. So I was there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um and I remember like bits and pieces of it. Um I remember I have a weird memory of like like right after I got diagnosed, like in the clinic, it was like an urgent care. My um my mom was like, Okay, let's go to the dollar store and get some stuff to bring to the hospital and she like took me to the dollar store that was next door and bought some like coloring books and crayons and all that stuff. Um, and then my dad on the way to the hospital, he drove me and he looked at me and he said something along the lines of, I don't think you're going to be able to eat any sugar anymore. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, what does that mean? That's like, what your dad I don't want to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, this is what diabetes is. You're not going to be able to eat sugar anymore. And you know, thank God that's not true. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, just some other like pieces along the way, um, I remember one moment, I actually wrote a story when I was in uh, high school creative writing class about it. And um, I got it published on Beyond Type 1, too, which is cool because I submitted it to them. But um, it was a story about um, the moment my mom gave me my first like insulin injection in the hospital. And it was like a really emotional moment for both my mom and I. But um, I think the funniest part about it, because I, I titled it when I was in Writer's Craft, our creative writing class, I titled it, I Need a Cigarette, because the nurse who like witnessed it all like it was a very like emotional moment between her and I the nurse like had to walk away and she was like I need a cigarette and she took her cigarette break after this moment that my mom had to give me my first injection so that's a moment that stands out but yeah like overall I I remember like feeling really really sick up until my diagnosis um I had some like random viruses that happened before like the week before too so like I had a really bad ear infection and then I had a random full body rash. And then like, I just remember feeling so sick, but I didn't want to tell my parents that I felt sick. Um, cause I was petrified of doctors and needles and all that stuff. So I like kept it to myself. Um, and I remember like hearing my parents being super concerned and still not bringing it up to them. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you were afraid they would feed you to the sled dogs if they knew you were. sick. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. They live in our backyard and they're hungry. I mean, your father's (laughs) just worried you can't like, she can't suck on the tap in the maple tree anymore. You know, like it's <laughs> you're just you're painting a picture of a place that I don't know how anyone lives there. Is it a frozen tundra? Just be honest with me. Permafrost. No. Can't find the roads. It's, you know what is funny is that I live in the southernmost part of Ontario. So it's like like people call it like the armpit of Canada because it's really humid here. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. Uh, under perjury of death, I couldn't point out Ontario on a map. <laughs> So. that's so funny oh my gosh we like like i don't know like i we border the states i live in a border city so like we're very americanized i feel too mm-hmm. because of that so like I, I go to a lot of like concerts in this uh, not recently obviously but yeah. um yeah here's what i know vancouver <laughs> seattle toronto like new yorkish uh mm-hmm. yukon top middle everything else i have no idea about Am I right? I that's right not about- bad hey, yeah come on tell me what you know about america where's montana quick yeah you have no idea i yeah somewhere in the middle somewhere in the i don't middle, think I that's think. right by the way no i don't think it is either yeah. maybe it's on the left on the left of the on map the i don't know <laughs> Wait, what are you a cartographer all right um, i don't know <laughs> so your note to me is is specific and yeah. um I, I don't know where to start, so I'm going to start with, um, let's see. It really is kind of thorough. I'm reading, which is, of course, yeah, very exciting for everybody. But I think I, that I want to start with the first time you felt burned out and what that felt like. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of like, I kind of like the way I think about burnout for me is that it's almost like cyclic or cyclical. Like I have gone through moments in time um, where like I get really motivated to take care of myself. And then I, then I like get into it for like a month or two and then I had stopped and then it like a year, a year or two passed. And then I'm like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta get on this again. And then I get back into it. Um, But for burnout for me, I think, Oh, I think the moment that that it really like, I started to notice like a change in my care was, um, 
I guess I should start with when I was in grade eight, I didn't do my own insulin injections until I was in the eighth grade. Um, Mm. I had a lot of anxiety around that. Um, So my parents did it. So like, I'm talking like my dad would like come at night when I went to a sleepover to do my long lasting. And then he'd be back there in the morning at my friend's house to do my breakfast insulin. And then like, I went home for lunch every day at school because I didn't do my own insulin injections. Um, So um, when I finally got that independence where I was able to do it on my own just before I went to high school, um, I think my parents kind of were like, she's got this, like, we don't need to do anything anymore. And I don't blame them for that at all because I did need that independence, but I think I, I took it on a little too quickly, like not as prepared as I thought I was. So when I got into high school, like diabetes kind of went on the, on the back burner for me. So, um, that I would say high school is when the burnout kind of started where I just stopped paying as close attention to it as I used to. Um, and then. Wait, wait, I don't know. Me, like, let, uh, me, let me understand. So, you, yeah, you you didn't give yourself any injections from the time you were six until you were like fourteen. No, I did. I, I was. Yeah, I think I was like thirteen when I did my first injection, and I didn't do any of them by myself because I. When I tell you, I had sorry, I had some bad anxiety. Like I was on, I, I was like diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. I was on medication and stuff like that throughout grade school, but I had like very severe anxiety about not even just about like me not doing it but like nobody except for my mom and dad could ever do it like so like we didn't have i didn't have a nurse in my grade school so that's why i went home for lunch every day i lived close to my grade school and my mom was a stay-at-home mom all right tell me what tell me what that felt like if um the idea of someone other than your mom or dad giving you a an injection like I, i you can just say i had anxiety but tell me what that meant like yeah if I was coming at you and you were 11 years old and I was like, hey, I'm Scott, I'm going to give you your shot right now. Would you like, would you shoot me? Would you run? Would you bite me? Like, what would your level of, or would you just cry, fall on the floor? What would happen? Um, Probably like panic would set in. Um, Anybody, like any of my close family members know this too. So like whenever I had to get like a flu shot or like any kind of vaccination or stuff like that when I was younger too. It was a big ordeal. Like I, my parents would have to like drag me to the doctor. Like I would crawl onto the walls. So I think I just had a lot of anxiety about, I don't know, like about like, it was just like so much fear. Like it was going to go wrong if somebody else did it. Or like if, if, if it wasn't somebody that I knew very, like if it wasn't my mom or my dad who I knew had been there for me, like since day one and knew everything about it, knew, knew me, knew who I was, like, it was just going to be horrible. Even though I knew, like, I know that now that's not true, but did it was, you, like, such a real fear for me. Did you have... There was... Um, did, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. You, did you have any um, anxiety around anything else? Yeah, a lot. Um, Yeah, like, I... Uh, when I was in the fifth grade, it was when it, all the anxiety kind of, like, started. Um, And I think this is really strange. I don't know what it's called when someone has a fear of getting sick. I, I can't... There's a name for it. Like. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it, but a kid got, okay. Okay. A kid got sick in my grade school once and I suddenly became, it became like a real fear to get sick at school, like to throw up at school. And then that tail spinned into a whole bunch of other stuff. And then I just became afraid of going to school in general. So my anxiety like took over at that point. And like, I missed like a month of school because of this fear so I, and then I wouldn't wasn't eating in the morning and my parents were like oh you kind of have to eat you have diabetes <laughs> and I was like well I don't want to because what if I get sick and yeah it was just like a that was another point of anxiety in my life I guess that I had I don't know why I'm sharing all of this <laughs> like, you better say something. I'm like why am I talking about this <laughs> yeah people tell me they tell me things that they don't mean to so be careful <laughs> is, it, is it is it nosophobia nosophobia um, oh maybe I don't know maybe I'm getting the 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 name wrong that could be it but yeah I just yeah I, I don't know why that became like a fear of mine and then yeah I just I was an anxious an anxious child maybe it's, is it firstborn syndrome aren't firstborn children the uh, most anxious I don't know are you still anxious <laughs> um yeah but I have more control over it now like I've learned I, I'm not on medication or anything like that if that's what you're if that was your, what I you wasn't. mean but no like I, I I mean in general I am an anxious person yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right carly do you think you're only 25 so you don't really know anything yeah so asking you this question is going to be maybe not helpful but let's ask it anyway uh do yeah you think yeah. there's something where your parents young parents no they no. actually weren't no okay 
uh, but they were interested in 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 helping. But the minute that you were like, I can do this injection myself, were they just out? Like, did you never talk to them again about diabetes at the beginning of high school when they were like, oh my God, Carly gave herself an injection. Thank God we can go back to doing the things we like. Was it like that or were they they still involved? Um, like my dad was the one that kind of took me to like endocrinologist appointments and things like that. So he was involved in that way. Um, but then when I became old enough to take myself to the doctor, yeah, I kind of just overall didn't really involve them much in it anymore. Like occasionally they'd be like, they'd check in on me and be like, like, how is it? Like, how are you doing? And and again, like, I don't place any blame on them for that because I never once vocalized that I was struggling at any point either. Um, like I, like, I don't know. I, yeah, it was just, I, I feel like I got that independence and I was excited about it too at the time. And they obviously were excited for me because they're like, Oh my God, she's gonna be able to do so much now on her own. Like she can go places. She can, you know, go on trips with her friends and do things now. We don't need to, be by her side anymore but then it was just like oh god like now I have to like I don't even know why but doing my own injection put so much more like stress onto me but like yeah it eventually just became like okay I don't have to with my parents not there beside me doing it anymore I don't have to pay as close attention I guess as I did in the past well okay so we're not denigrating your parents I'm just asking questions oh no yeah but um let me be clear like you went to doctor's appointments for your type one right how frequently yeah so yeah like when I was in high school I guess I would go like the like the I don't know what they recommended that every three months every six months I was doing that and then like when I went to my started going on my own I would be so anxious that I w- didn't want to go because I knew I wasn't taking as good care of myself as I was in the past yeah um so when I was a kid though like my like my dad went to all the appointments and my A1Cs were like right on target and like everything was great and then it, when it was left into my hands more so I was just kind of like oh god I'm slipping up and I don't want them to know that I'm slipping up um and so I didn't go as often and then and you yeah. didn't tell them but they didn't they didn't ask either were No you? I think it was I think it was kind of like don't ask and I don't have to worry about it even if you are, like it was almost like that kind of a relationship where it was like I didn't want to worry them with my personal struggles with diabetes because they had taken care of me for so long and I didn't want to put more on to them. Um, and they didn't ask because I think like my mom is a very anxious person too. So I didn't want to make her more anxious about my health, uh, even though I was struggling. So it was kind of like a, like, you know, plug your ears and we'll just pretend everything's okay. How, how do you manage now? <laughs> like, do you just talk yourself out of it? Are you smoking a lot of weed? What are you doing exactly? <laughs> um, this year has been life-changing for me um I I I think I mentioned it in my email to you but like in January of this year I finally was like I need to get a new endocrinologist because I didn't have a great relationship with my last one um and then I need to like get my A1C done it's been like a year and a half since I had had my previous A1C and I just want to like get my life in check because you know I got I got married last month and I wanted to like get my life together before I like even thought about ever, you know, like starting a family. And now I have a husband and I want to be there for him and that sort of thing. So my A1C in January was 10.6. And that was like the highest recorded one I can think of. I can think back on anyways. Um, And I was like, okay, I need to make serious changes now. Um, And so I started, um, I had had an Instagram account, but I reactivated my Instagram account and became more active in the community in that way. Um, And then I like, for the first time, because like up until January of this year, I had never even, I, I'd been doing injections and regular finger picking. Like I didn't have any technology. I never had tried a CGM or a pump, nothing like that. Um, so yeah, like I, I, and now like my last A1C was in September and it was 6.9%. So like I really turned myself around and I'm still trying my best to, you know, make changes right. because I want to be healthy. And what, what yeah. was the, um, What's the difference between a 10 and a 6? I mean, at a 10, are you just, like, counting carbs, giving yourself some insulin, and never checking again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, when I when I was at 10 point, like, like, like up until I got that A1C check, um, I, I have notes here, like, kind of describing. And, like, I would basically um, – I remember I knew it was really bad when I had, like, went to go check my finger. And then I looked back on the last time I had checked my finger, and it was, like, two weeks prior. And I was like, wow, I haven't checked in a long time. Why did I just stop checking? Because the, the thought of checking my finger and seeing like bad results was so daunting to me that I was like, I'm just not going to check. And I'll just go off how I'm feeling. So 
So I had gotten so used to feeling like absolute trash that it became normal. Um, yeah, so I was just living. And like when I, I, I didn't really carb count either. I, I feel like whenever I ate something, it was like, this is probably worth seven units worth of insulin. And then I would just do it. And then um, the only thing I did make sure I do, I would do is before bed, I would, um, if I was feeling off in any way, I would, I would check. Um, and then I would do my long lasting because I had this fear, like if I go so high, like maybe I'll just die in my sleep and then my parents would find me and then they would never know that I was struggling this badly or, oh, you know what I mean? Like I, I, oh. it was pretty dark thoughts. Car- Carly, hold on. Yes, yes. Yes. Let's stop for a second. Okay. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to stop talking about diabetes for a second. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I am okay. I, I, I swear, like I am so much better than I was years prior to this like this has been the best year for me okay. no, no, I'm, I'm glad i'm glad about that oh that, that's not what i'm personal. saying personally i'm saying yes. are you, are, well, can you tell me are there other things you worry about that aren't reasonable to worry about <gasps> yeah but but <laughs> hold on don't but yeah no, no. yeah no. what are some of them do i want to get into this it's just like i have i have irrational fears Okay, I want to hear what they are. Like, and they're dark, Scott. Like, I've never really, like, disclosed this to people. Like, except for my close friends and Curtis. But, okay, Curtis is my husband, by the way. Okay. Um, I have a couple of irrational fears. um, And I have, like, reoccurring nightmares about them sometimes. I think I should get a therapist, Scott. You you tell me your your top three irrational fears, and I'll tell you my three top irrational fears, okay? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. You want to go back and forth. You do one, and I'll do one. Okay. Okay. Um, number one, my biggest fear is somehow being involved in a mass shooting, like okay. finding myself in a situation where I'm, I'm someone just shooting up the place. Okay. I, yeah. Hold, hold on. All right, all right. Just relax. Are you okay? Relax. Just take, take a big deep breath. Take a big deep breath and hold it for five seconds. No, no. Take, oh, oh. I'll do it with you. Ready? All right, we're going to relax. I want you to do that a couple times a day. Now, my here's one of my (laughs) irrational fears, okay? Okay. I don't want to be eaten by a shark. That's that's valid. Now, now, here's the funny thing. I don't go in the ocean. (laughs) Do you know why I have an irrational fear about this? No. I'm going to tell you. My parents, who were terrible parents, okay? And I don't (laughs) care if they hear this or not. Let me watch Jaws in a movie theater when I was five. You were five, right? Uh, that, that's so little, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when now I'm oh fifty, God. and if you said to me, Scott, what are you really worried about? I'd say to you, I'm being eaten by a shark, and you'd say, Do you go in the ocean frequently? And I'd go, No, I don't. So now <laughs> let me say to you that that despite how it feels when there's media coverage. There are not mm-hmm. a great deal of mass shootings in Canada. As, as there, there's literally not. Yeah, That's actually, why it's so Canadians rational. don't shoot each other. As a matter of course, <laughs> you know that, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what they do? They're very stabby. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a bit of that going on. No, I know, right? I know. But you don't have any fears about being stabbed. I don't. Okay. Guns are scarier than knives to me. I don't so, know why. So you tell me why I shouldn't be afraid of sharks death why you shouldn't be afraid of sharks yeah i want you to talk me i want you to talk me out of being concerned about being eaten by a shark okay um i don't think you should be afraid of being eaten by a shark because you don't put yourself in the place where sharks live um and the only other place where sharks are are maybe aquariums and if you don't go to aquariums either then you you just never run into a shark so you're going to be totally fine let me tell you something i know about those sharks in the aquarium they're fed so well that if I jumped in there and rubbed my ass on their face, they wouldn't bite me, okay? Because they let them swim with other animals, and they don't want the shark getting peckish and eating a bluefin tuna. You understand? So, they, so, and you can't get to the top of where you can get into the tanks when you're at the aquarium anyway. Now, I, you've done a good job That's for true. me. Thank you. I am going to try oh, okay. harder not to worry about being eaten by a shark. Now. Okay. Have you ever witnessed a mass shooting? No, I haven't. Okay. And I don't know where this fear came from, but it's 
Yeah. Yeah, but but no, 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 no. <laughs> don't don't worry about where it came from. I want to know how we're going to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Because you seem to me like you were worried about so many things that you can't <laughs> focus on the things you actually should be worried about. Right. Okay. That's, that's very true. Trust me. Now, go ahead. You go tell me your next one. <sighs> okay. What's another one? Um, I think like just people I love dying at any point in time. Like I'm going to, any phone call I get, if my dad calls me while I'm at work, I'm like, someone's dead. Someone's dead. I pick it up. I'm like, who's dead? That's, that's my, that's okay. where my brain goes. All right. I, I'm going to ask you a question. Did anyone yeah. around you when you were growing up act that way? What do you mean? Like anxious? Like if and the like phone stress? rang after nine, was your mom like, oh my God, my mom's dead and jump up and grab the phone? <laughs> Yeah, my I, I will. You know what? Point blank. I am anxious because of my mom. <laughs> my mom is a, is a ball of anxiety, so I know that I get it from her. Um, like she was the one that, like, when I was a kid, like if we went, to, we had, we walked to school. She she would be like, "Have a great day at school." If someone tries to pick you up in the truck, this is what you're gonna do. And like, so then I, all the time walking to school, I'd be like, "Who's gonna?" I have to be prepared at any given moment to fight off a stranger who's going to put me in their car. Wait, wait, wait. Like, stop. I don't want to laugh at you. So I'm going to stop. No, you can so laugh. I'm going to stop laughing. <laughs> but um, every day? Not every day, but like she would, she would make me, like she would make us scared of, okay, I'll tell you another one. I have a very irrational fear of bees, guys. I love <laughs> insects and animals. I have, I am so afraid of bees like wasps and things like that. When I was a kid, my mom is afraid of them too. She acts the same way as I do if one comes near her, oh, like where you're like, ah! I want to stop like, you. I want to stop you. Yeah. I okay. think you act the way she acts. I do. Yeah, She's you... implemented. I am the way I am because of her. Okay. It's not cool, man. No, <laughs> she probably owes you reparations, but we'll get to that in a second. It, we'll, we'll take them as co-pays for your therapy that I'm pretty sure we're going to send you to. So, um, be, because I think a lot of your issues aren't, aren't um necessarily i don't think you're necessarily stuck with them because I, as no. crazy as this sounds i don't think you're actually a very anxious person i just think you have a lot of rules in your head that you're following oh that's right? interesting do you see what i'm saying yeah. because i'm like a- well, well because earlier you said i have it under control better which to me means i married a guy who's not loony skip rooney and because he's not constantly worried about things i'm able to relax and quiet the voices in my head that tell me that everyone's going to drag me into a car and kill me is this a podcast or a therapy session because it feels it feels like a therapy session and i'm not mad about it well carly listen at some point when we're 25 minutes into it and i'm thinking this poor girl I've got the next 45 minutes to save her life. And then she's headed back up to Saskatchewan or wherever the hell she's from. Okay. And, um, and then she's going to just die in a ball of anxiety. There's yeah. like, like you, you I, there was a moment 15 minutes into this where I thought someone just needs to give you a good bracing slap across the head <laughs> and then grab you by the shoulders and shake you and go, Carly, 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 stop. <laughs> So, oh my God. I know we don't legally do that to people anymore. Although in the fifties, it happened all the time. Men, women, they would just slap each other to stop themselves. I don't know if that was just in the movies I saw or what, but I like the idea. Uh, but the, we're going to do it this way through conversation instead, because you're not allowed to hit people anymore, Carly. It's 2021. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay. so since we can't hit you, which I don't think would work anyway, I'm teasing. Um, I just want to. I, I want you to ask me my next irrational fear. Scott, what's your next irrational fear? I don't have any more. Oh, just a shark. Yeah, that's the only thing that my parents did to me that I have an irrational fear about. That's not that's that's pretty good then. Okay. Like you're you're doing pretty well. Now I'll give you another irrational fear that I have that doesn't come from my parents. Okay. I think mm, no, nah, I don't think. I used to think, not think, that's wrong. I used to feel when I was younger. That if, we're, if there was conflict in a family, it meant that the family was going to fall apart. Mm. And I don't think I had it in me to start over again because I'm adopted. And then my mm-hmm. adopted family got divorced when I was 13. And so oh. what I knew was that people, uh, when they find conflict in their life, give people away. 
And then I knew that when people had conflict, some they didn't work it out. They just ran in different directions. And so if people had conflict, it didn't matter what level of conflict. I, when I was younger, felt like that was going to be the disillusion of our knowing of each other. And it panicked mm -hmm. me. And then I would work very, very hard, usually in ways that weren't valuable, to try to calm everybody down and keep them together. And do you know what I've learned since then? What? That my adoption and my parents' divorce have literally nothing to do with what may or may not happen in my life. It's yeah, meaningless. That's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, the way my wife and I handle conflict isn't the way my parents did. Mm -hmm. and so I was literally worried about nothing. And all I had to do was let go of it. You give it voice. This is going to sound very hocus pocusy, okay, Carly? Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of, I, okay. You give it voice, which means you say it out loud, and then you stop worrying about it. And that's it. Right. By the way, do you know what else? It, I'm going to sound crazy for a second. Mm -hmm. You ever read a book called Mind Over Back Pain? No. Okay. Well, I think it's possible that if you, four or five times a day, quietly in your mind, not out loud, told yourself, I'm a young, healthy person, and there is nothing wrong with my back, it would stop hurting. Okay. Like the power of your brain can control that? Here, yes. Here, here's what I'll yeah. say. Um, if mm -hmm. you go to work, you have a job, right? Yeah. All right. You go to work and you do whatever you're skinning something or I don't know, extracting oil from something, <laughs> whatever you do. And 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 you have a, a terrible day, bad day. And you come home at the end of the day with a headache, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think your brain is broken? No. Okay. When you have a terrible day and you come home and your back hurts, do you think you're old and your back hurts and you have problems? <laughs> Maybe sometimes. Okay. Now <laughs> Now we'll move on to your next and third and last irrational fear. What is it? Um, Try hard. I told you my adoption thing. Right. What? I got to think about this for a second. Yeah. Um, I, I think most of my irrational fears are just like things that I know are not going to happen, but they seem so real. I think, I think it's like doom. Like I'm afraid that like there's going to be a terrorist attack where I live and the whole we're, it's it's just bad. That's what I I fear doom. Like I fear like really traumatic events happening, and like I can like visualize it in my head happening. Okay. Like a terrorist attack. I live in a place that's like without giving away my location. I guess I live in a place that's like a major trading area. I guess for both countries. So it's like a pretty. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, okay. I I'm just afraid of terrorists. Attack. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't. I, I understand. So you, in I general, think that whatever the worst thing that could happen is, is the thing you're worried about. Exactly. Do you, yeah. Do I you hear watch, the worst things. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Do you watch no, or I, consume the news regularly? I did. Especially, I try not to know. No, that's a lie. I still do. Okay. I'm always looking at news. Hey, Carly, <laughs> Carly, listen to me. Yeah. Do you listen to this podcast? Oh, yeah. I have, have I been helpful to you in any part of your life? Absolutely. Okay, here, I'm going to be helpful to you again. Okay. Never watch the news or read the news again in your life. Okay. May I tell you why? Yes. You can't handle it. I can't. Yeah. It's not for you. No. And that's okay. Not a judgment. Okay? Yeah. Not a judgment. Yeah. It's not for you. Now, um, also, we could dig into it if you want to, but the news is stilted to make you feel the exact way you feel so that you will mm -hmm. what? Watch more news. Oh, watch more. Yeah. yeah. It's true. It's addicting. It mm. makes you want to read more. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're why? You're worried. So you want to get the information you need to stop yourself from being blown up by a terrorist. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. worry. I understand you like a book. Don't, don't, it's okay. <laughs> like a book I've read a thousand <laughs> times. Now, you're not allowed to watch the news anymore. I don't want you reading the news. If you have a news app on your phone, I want you to delete it. Okay? Okay. Never listen to CNN. <laughs> MSNBC, Fox News, any of those, please avoid those like yep. the plague. You are allowed to read NPR once a week, okay? But only two stories, <laughs> and then you're done. And one of them has to be about music. 
Okay. Okay. I want you to. Okay. Learn. Okay. That's it. No more news. It's not good for you. It's okay. No shame. I'm just. I'm realizing like how toxic. Like I. I go when I go to work. The bef- like I log in my computer and I'm like news.google.com what, what horrible things are happening in the world right now i want to read about them yeah because <laughs> you're feeding your own uh, your you, it, it's like you it's fear porn yeah oh right. my god it is yeah <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah you you want to be upset it's your natural it's your natural state you're trying to keep this level of eh, 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 that you have going <laughs> like, like that. Like, I bet you vibrate in person. I bet if I got near you, I'd be like, God damn, that girl is vibrating. Do you vibrate? <laughs> do you? I do. I feel like, okay. I feel like this whole time I've been thinking in my head, like, God, when I listen back on this, I'm going to sound like a nutcase. Like, no, no, no. Then- You're not going <laughs> to sound like a nutcase. You're going to sound like a person who grew up with an anxious mother who went into a world with a, a ton of information uh, that you keep hearing and and let me tell you, and, and it and it reinforces it for you. I'm gonna tell you something right now. The world is a safer place right now than it was 50 years ago. It is a safer place than it was 200 years ago. It is a safer place than it was a thousand years ago. Okay? Genghis Khan is not gonna come through Ontario and kill every man and rape every woman and kill every child. He's not going to do that again. It's not gonna happen. Okay? It is safer now than it was then. Yeah. Your house has locks, right? Yep. yep. There are police departments that deter people yep. from doing things. Mm-hmm. You're married to a guy. I'm sure he's a big strapping Canadian man. You could probably pick up an otter with one hand and beat a man to death with it, right? <laughs> Do you feel safe when you're with him? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> yep. You're fine. And listen, okay. I'm, I'm going to say something crazy to you. If you're walking down the street one day, and someone grabs you and pulls you into a truck and kills you. Mm-hmm. There's not a ton of you could do about that. No. Yep. Right. Bad luck. Yep. Okay. But we don't <laughs> give away every day of our life on the off chance that someone's going to snatch you up. Okay. We don't, we, we don't mm-hmm. do that. We don't give away our life like that. Another thing here, if I can make a parallel for you, we don't mm-hmm. give away days of our blood sugar out of fear either. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you check your blood sugar because knowing is better than not knowing. Yeah. About your diabetes, knowing is better than not knowing. About the Mm -hmm. news, not knowing is better than knowing, especially for you right now. Yep. Because you told me in your note, I'm going to, I better get my S together for my, I'm (laughs) so lazy, I didn't want to edit that out, so I said S. (laughs) I I better get my S together for myself, my future husband, my future unborn children. Okay. You do not want 25 years from now for your kid to be on whatever the equivalent is of a podcast and say, my mom is the reason I feel like this. Oh, God. Yeah. I got to end it. Right now. now. Cut the string. <laughs> right now. Break the circle. You can do it. I don't act like my dad acted, but I did when I was younger and I stopped myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. You could do this. This is not a problem. I would I would say therapy, but you're in Canada and I don't know what like a shaman you're going to meet. You know what I mean? Like you got to get a real person. Yeah. yeah. Somebody who really understands the business. You ever hear Erica on this podcast? She's the, um, a family therapist. You should listen to her, by the way. Um, I don't know if I've come to that episode yet. No. Yeah, she's she's in California. So you did I just say California? She's in California. California. I was like, what the hell? She's in California, <laughs> so you can't use her. But you got to find okay. a good person to talk to, and to get rid yeah. of all this like pretend. You have a lot of pretend in your life that doesn't exist, and you keep feeding it. Mm-hmm. All right, and I've caught you just okay. in time. Twenty five. I've saved your life just now. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm taking a victory lap right now with my hand. I'm waving to the people and I'm in a room by myself and I actually am waving my hand like in victory. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because we met today and I'm happy about that. Oh, me too. <laughs> All right. Now tell me why you shouldn't be worried about a mass shooting. Because the odds of it happening are slim to none because I live in Canada where guns aren't accessible. Mm-hmm. As accessible, I should say. Um, you know, and if it does happen, 
then it does happen and there's nothing I can do about it. So here's another thing for you. This might be controversial to some people. <clears throat> there aren't that many mass shootings. Mm hmm. You hear about every one of them. They're terrible, so they sound horrible. And mm -hmm. the media, like, you know, keeps feeding them to you. But did you notice that during COVID, you didn't hear about one person shooting somebody? Yeah. Why was that? Be Come on, Carly. Because, Why not? Because, I don't know. They, because all, COVID they, already, was... they had COVID to make you upset with. Right. Okay. Not that COVID exactly. wasn't bad. I'm not saying COVID wasn't bad. They already had oh, yeah. their thing. To get you ginned up, to get you to come back the next day, to get you to click on the next link, to keep you worried and concerned and paying attention. They didn't need to tell right. you about the shootings because they had COVID, right? Right. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> I just got to stop watching the news. You're bad at watching the news, Carly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most, most people are. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're Especially after good the last it. two years. Yeah. yeah. Of course. This was the worst time. I watched oh, my yeah. son tell my wife for three months in a row, please stop watching the news. Please stop watching this. So she finally stopped. And she then, I watched her thank him for telling him that. Mm. Telling her that. That's, that's great. All right. Now, are you worried about dying in a car accident? Not so much. Like, no. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. It's the, it's the crazy that I'm scared. Oh, sorry. It's crazy stuff I'm scared of. Got to come over here and edit this podcast for me now. I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. If, if you were going to curse, I would have just cursed. Oh, I'm really sorry. You fucked me up. I hope you're happy. <laughs> now I, you before I started this, I was like, don't swear. Do not no, swear. Fine. Like, I know you can don't bleep it out, but I don't want to make your life no, difficult. No, it's fine. Oh, now you cursed. I cursed. We're going to curse. All right. Now. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to your list. Yeah. Kidney disease. Do you have kidney disease? Go find your blood glucose meter. Did you choose it or did somebody give it to you? Does it work really well or would you have no way of knowing? Do you just trust it because it's the one you have and it's the one you were given? Or do you trust it because you did some research and you found out this is a really accurate meter? And if you did, then good for you. I think that's great. But if you find yourself in that other category of someone who was just handed a meter then I really believe that you owe it to yourself to check out the Contour Next One blood glucose meter. You can do that, of course, at contournext.com forward slash juice box. When you get to this web page, it's the internet. You know what I'm talking about. You'll see pictures and words, what you expect from a web page. But this one has more. There's tabs at the top and everything you want to know about the Contour Next One is there. It talks about the pricing, the accuracy, Everything that's important that, let's be honest, you should have checked into before you just took that other meter. But you didn't. Fair's fair. But now you know. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Second chance test trips. You make a little blood drop, and it, it doesn't need a lot of blood, but say you make a little blood drop, it's a little too small. Touch it on the strip. Oh, it's not enough. Get out a little more blood, a little squeeze. You put on some more, and that's where I, you know, beep, beep, it works now. Oh, does not influence the accuracy of the strip. You won't waste test strips if you don't get it right the first time. It's got second chance testing. It's a big deal. The meter also fits well in your hand or your purse or the bag you carry your supplies in. It's got a bright light for nighttime viewing and the screen is simple and easy to look at. There's no complicated markings everywhere. Just the number, boom, there it is. Nice and easy to read. And if you want, you can connect the meter to an app on your phone to get even more information and helpful little tidbits. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Go take a look. Now, what if you're thinking about getting a Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor? Well, that's a good idea because you're going to see the speed and direction of your blood sugar in real time. I will pull up my daughter's right now. I have an iPhone. I have swiped up. The phone is open because it recognizes my face. It's like, hello, Scott. And um, what's her blood sugar? 87. How's that sound? Just like that, I know Arden's blood sugar is 87. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. You may be eligible for a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6. Head to my link to find out. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. But all in all, if you want to see blood sugars in real time, this is if you're using insulin, right? doesn't matter. I mean... 
type one, type two, using insulin, uh, you need to see your blood sugar, the speed and direction it's moving. And the Dexcom will show you that. Not just 87, but my daughter's blood sugar is 87 and stable. If it was rising or falling, there'd be an arrow to indicate that. And that arrow would tell me how fast she was moving. This is the bestest. It's what you need. Not only is it great for safety and health, helps you make good decisions about bolusing and food, but it also, it also teaches you. Now, these are my, my experiences and yours may vary, but I learned so much by watching what the blood sugar does, how the insulin impacts it, how the food impacts it. These things are, they're paramount to me and how I manage insulin for my daughter. And I think you would find them incredibly valuable too. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box links in the show notes links at juiceboxpodcast.com to these and all the sponsors. Thank you so much for listening to the ads. Now, let me get you back to Carly. What did I write? I'm going to pull my, Oh no, wait, hold on. <laughs> Wrong thing. That was the lady from yesterday. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, I don't, I don't remember writing. <laughs> I can't believe I'm laughing about, I'm not laughing about kidney disease. I'm laughing that I got them the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jesus. That's okay. I'm like, you, you said that switching from your pediatric endo to your adult endo caused you a lot of uh consternation. Um, so that I hear that from a lot of people. I want to know more about that. Yeah, I I think I have a little note here. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's talked about enough in general. Like, I have heard people talk about it, but not a lot because that experience for me was like the worst. <laughs> um, and I don't know if other people can relate to me, but um, like when I had to, like, obviously I was six when I met with the care team there and like most of the same people were with me, like up until I turned 18. And like when I had to leave the, the pediatric care and the, go to the adult clinic, I felt like someone died. Like I felt like I lost a family member. And like, I was just mourning that, like that I didn't have that support anymore because yeah, like, like the, I remember the like my last appointment at the pediatric clinic, my, my dad had come with me actually, because I think he wanted to come because it was my last. And there was this nurse there who like, I love, she's so nice. Um, and she walked us down to the adult clinic. And like, I cried, she cried, like my dad got teary. Like it felt like I was, he, she was like passing me along to the next part of like my life. But then like, it just wasn't a very like welcoming I don't know, like the endocrinologist that I was get like a assi- like assigned to or became a patient of, like just very cold, like didn't didn't seem to care in the way that like I had been cared for for so long. So, all right, all right. good. Um, I got it. Hold on, now I'm gonna ask questions. Yeah. What was your A1C while you were seeing your pediatric endocrinologist? I wish I had a list of my A1Cs, but like most of the majority of the time when I was in pediatric care, my A1C was never any higher than like seven. Okay. And why did you, did you live with this woman? Why did you care so much? <laughs> Let me, we left my daughter's endo appointment the other day and oh God, I hope they don't listen to this because I don't want this to feel bad. <laughs> and she said to me, and I'm quoting now, why do we come here? Pardon, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. And I said, well, when we leave, we get waffles. So that's all right. You know, and she's you get like, waffles? Yeah, we go for waffles after endo. Oh, you guys get waffles. I thought you meant they give you waffles. Oh, you I was thought like, the That's... endocrinologist was giving out waffles? <laughs> Maybe like sugar-free waffles. No, we leave that place and we roll up the street to this joint and we get chicken and waffles and we use real syrup and a ton of butter and we eat waffles right. together and we don't let our right. sugar spike. And then we laugh and That's... we leave. And so, That's um, amazing. But she said, why do we, why do we come here? Mm-hmm. And so... If you if you diagnose that that idea, we know how to take care of our diabetes, right? We don't need right. a check in for someone to tell us to do do you're doing a good job. Yeah, or, or remind yeah. me. I don't need a pep talk from somebody, right? I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure some people do. I'm not denigrating that. I'm just saying we don't need that. I'm wondering why do you need it? Like why did you? What was so important about that connection to you and this person? I think it was like just more so like. I don't know if it was like emotional support or if it was more like, like, Oh, I just like, they, they feel like family because I've been seeing them since I was six. So like, I, I mean, I guess it's not, that's not obviously true for everybody. You Arden was like what, two or three when she was diagnosed. Yeah. Arden's, the same been, Arden's been seeing these people for a very, very long time. Like I could right. walk around and you that don't... building with my eyes closed. 
yeah. yeah, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like that realization, like like after I left, like I'm like, oh sh-, like or oh crap, <laughs> I'm an adult that. now and I have to take care of myself. And it, like it just it got more real. Like so I didn't have them question. as a crutch. Did you think yeah. that, or did somebody tell that to you? Did your mom say to you, "This is it now. <laughs> you're an adult. You're gonna have to take care of this." Was there ever? Did you ever get those conversations from her? No, I don't think so. I think it's because she, my parents both kind of like, I don't know. They did, they were the type where like when they weren't as involved in my care, they would be like, are you taking care of yourself? Are you checking your fingers? Are you, and I'm like, yes, I am. And I get like a noise. Sorry? Weren't you lying when you said that? Yes, I was. Because if I talked about anytime, like anytime I was asked, how are you doing? Like, or like, like, are you, I'm like, like, Oh, I'm great. Everything's fine. Because I didn't, if I were to get into it, I would just cry. Like I would cry. And I didn't, I didn't know how to like, but I'm telling you, like if I had an, if I had a therapist, like who specialized in like people with diabetes, I think I would have been okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Like anytime I went to and the endocrinologist, like my adult one, the one I was seeing before I switched, um, there was this nurse there who like, was really into the scare tactic method Mm -hmm. which i am not a fan of personally it doesn't work on me it just makes me not want to come back to see you which then furthermore makes me not take care of myself as well i have cried so many times because of her like in the office the last time i saw her she was like oh stop crying she's gonna think i like made you upset and i'm like yeah because you did (laughs) like she was telling me a story about her sister who died from complications of diabetes and like her feet her feet had to be cut off and her, her kidney shut down and all this stuff. And I'm like, you're not helping me. You're just freaking me out. And I already know these things anyway. I need like, I have a an hug. idea for you. I have an idea for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What if I mm-hmm. made a fake news program that just told you to take care of yourself or you, <laughs> or somebody would shoot you while you were walking in the street? That would probably make you do it, right? Yeah, I would. I definitely would. Or would it not? Or would it just make you fit more afraid? I don't know. I, I, I'm like a complex. My brain is complex. Oh, I don't or is it not? Oh, Carly, I don't think you're that complex. But I, I'm I don't saying, think you're <laughs> listen, you, you went from a 10A1C to a 6A1C in a short amount of time, which tells me you know how to take care yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's not the problem. The problem is, is that you just, out of anxiety which we call it now, but the truth is you just don't want to hear bad news unless yeah. you feed it to yourself. Then you're thrilled to have it, uh, So, which is odd. Um, I don't know why you couldn't just... That's, Go ahead. That's, just, that's exactly it. That's like, like you've literally just described who I am. No. Yeah, I, well, I've been talking to you for an hour. I, I got it figured out already. <laughs> it's not that hard. No. <laughs> Partly, we're all basically the same people. True. Yeah, yeah. It's very simple to p- figure people out. I don't want to like, you know... I'm not putting down therapy, but like all you got to do is talk to people for a while to figure out how they think and then say the things that don't make sense to them in a way that doesn't make them upset. And then they understand Mm -hmm. it and then it's kind of over. So therapy. (laughs) Okay. So by the way, I'm not a therapist. I'm not trained at all. You recognize I didn't go to college, right? Oh, no, I did not know that. You should not be listening to me. This is a massive (laughs) mistake on your part. But but listen, that was a joke. You can tell the difference, right? Yeah, of course. All right. I didn't go to college. I wasn't joking about that. I I don't think it's a mistake for you to come here. So isn't it interesting, though, that testing your blood sugar and getting bad news made you feel like a failure? Is that right? Yeah. But listening to the news and getting scared about something, that's not you. So you don't feel like a failure. But you love that fear porn feedback. Mm-hmm. It, so if I guarantee you, if I made the management of your diabetes in your mind, someone else's responsibility, you would actually enjoy seeing it go poorly. Ooh. So tell me how we can make it so that when you see the result, the result feels like good information that you'll use to make a good decision next time and not like failure. And how we can stop desiring to feel scared. Tell me what we can do for you to do that. And when I say we, I'm clearly talking about you. So (laughs) what can you do to put yourself in that position? 
Feedback is good, right? You have a CGM now? Yeah, I have the Dexcom and I have an Omnipod now too, mainly because of your, like this podcast that influenced me to get both of them. So well, let me stop right here in this moment and say, hey, Dexcom and Omnipod, when I tell you the price is going up for the ads, you just listen to Carly and you go, okay, all cool, right? <laughs> I yeah. mean, how much do you send those people? A fair amount, right? They can give me a little bit, oh, yeah. don't you think, Carly? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. By the way, they're, yeah. they're really great partners, and I'm just joking. Um, that no, <laughs> nobody fights with me about stuff like that. I'm teasing. But I am. I think it's funny. I think it's funny, like, how many people that you interview on here or talk to on here um, that say, like, oh, I'm, I'm on an Omnipod in the Dexcom, and, like, and then you're like, I swear to God, I didn't tell them to say that. I didn't tell you to say that, did I? <laughs> No, I know. No, you didn't. But I just think it's funny because I'm like, well, I mean, they're pretty great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> How can you dispute it? Let's be clear. They're great devices. I'm just, I just, I read ads for them. I don't even read ads. I make them up on the spot. You know that I mm -hmm. do, the other night I sat down with four episodes that were edited. So they're, um, I burped. I apologize. So they're all like oh, I didn't edited. Hear. Oh, you didn't hear it? Then I didn't burp. Um, didn't. <laughs> so they're all edited up for sound. And they're in chunks, right? There's a, a gap in the front for me to put the open in. Then there's the first part of the podcast. There's a small gap for me to put the ads. There's the rest of the podcast. There's a gap at the end. And I fill it in during editing. But I sit down and do like four episodes at a time. So I make up on the spot the ads. I don't have anything written down specifically. Once in a while, there's reasons to read exact verbiage. I make sure I do that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And in like an hour... I record all the opens, so the bumpers and the ads for four shows. And by oh, wow. the time it's over, my brain is spinning in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I can imagine. Sometimes you'll hear me say, like, in the middle of the ad, I'll just, like, I'll lose it. And sometimes I just leave it in because it's, like, 11 o'clock <laughs> at night. And I'm like, whatever. I'm not editing that out. <laughs> so, um, That's great. Point is this. You're okay. Mm-hmm but you don't know it for some reason. <laughs> Probably because I'm so comfortable with not always being okay. <laughs> scared of something and not being okay. That like, yeah. now that I actually am okay with everything, like you want to like, make it bad. Just you're... relax. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So like, I, I'm like, just relax. All right. I know other people like this. Mm -hmm. They love being upset. Now mm -hmm. they don't really love it. Like consciously. It's just their no. comfort zone. Yelling and angry and at odds with one of the people they always there's always a person in the group that has to be doing something wrong i'm making quotes with my fingers right so the group mm -hmm. always needs to be mad at one person in the group and then that'll shift and then the person who was ma being mad at like people were mad at they get to be part of the next group that gets mad at somebody else this is their default happy place this this group of people oh. It's how they love to live. The more really? upset they are, the more comfortable they are. Wow. And I think you're comfortable when you're anxious. Not because yes. you're not comfortable with the anxiety. It's just, it's a, no. it's a, it's a, a known quantity to you. It's a feeling that is familiar. It probably yeah. even makes you feel close to your mom in some weird way. <laughs> my, what am I? Oh my God. This is so toxic. Like I'm like, I go to, I go to like see her and I'm like, did you hear about what happened? Like this horrible thing happened. Did you hear about it? And she's like, yeah, I saw it. And then we talk about it. Mm. And then I'm like, oh, this is bad. It's like, this should not be happening. Right Are you worried yet that I then, have cameras in your home and I can see your life? No. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't until you said I, that. <laughs> Are you now worried about that? No, yeah. I have, I have all those little slidey things on my webcam. <laughs> can see me. <laughs> I'm not using your cameras, Carly. I've put my own cameras in. Oh, no, I'm not like paranoid. No, that's well, I'm I don't gonna know take what that back just in case there are any real, like, severe, <laughs> like, mental illness on listening to the show. I don't listen to people's, I can't get cameras into your house. I was making a bigger point to Carly that I said something about her interpersonal relationship with her mother that I have no way of knowing about that I was a million percent right about. So, um, <laughs> so you guys, you guys fear porn each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounded weird, but yeah, it's true. <laughs> Carly, oh, hold on a second. <clears throat> Should I call this episode Carly Fear Porn's or Mom? Oh, my God. No, I definitely won't. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not going to do that. Um, oh, my God. No, I might call this one Scott was right again. There'll be a comma between right and again. 
or three dots. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Anyway. No, no, no. I, <laughs> uh, is this helping you at all? It is. I like. I know. I know you're not a therapist, but I feel like I've like I've like learned more about myself than I did before I started this podcast. <laughs> like things that I knew were um, like that is who I am and and how I operate. Right. But like I've never like actually like had someone like say it out loud to me or like I've never heard it be told. Yeah. I just thought this is who I am. Like, nah, I don't think this is why you, I, am I don't think you have to be like this at all. As a matter of fact, you seem no. like a very nice, happy person. I am. And that's the funny part is that I don't think a lot of people who know me would think that I have all this like doom in my brain. Like, cause I'm very like, very bubbly and I'm happy and I'm nice. So, like all my friends are like, if I send this around to my friends, they're going to be like, what the heck? Like, Oh, they won't know this about you. I don't think they're going to know like these really dark, dark, deep fears that I have. Like maybe some of them, like my really close friends will, but like if I, I don't know, like I want to destroy this, like on, on some of my, like on Facebook and stuff after I'm going to be like, do I want to share this? You don't have to share it. This could be private for you. (laughs) And if you do share it, what what are you going to do if they come back to you and they're like, oh, Carly, we know this about you. Then I'll be like, wow, I guess I'm not as sly as I thought. Do you think you're being, I guess I'm, is the bubbly to be sly? Are you trying to mask the anxiety? Yeah, probably. I think maybe that's my my way of trying to make people around me think I'm, I'm good. So <laughs> you're I'm worried that people will find out that you're un, unsettled? Yeah, like they're going to be like why why are you why are you letting that consume your brain? Like that's crazy. Why like, <laughs> why would you tell me all this stuff and not your friends? I do tell my friends. Well, some of my friends know. Like, I've okay. talked about it with some of my friends who I feel like I can, like, open up about their Were stuff they help? Too. They weren't helpful because they're 25, too. They don't know anything, right? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I yeah. don't know. No, I'm, trust me. Yeah. I know. It's fine. I was 25 once, too. I knew four things. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it takes a while to learn things. That's why we got to keep old people alive. <laughs> they, know the, they know the things. They know the, they things. Know the things. Old people know yeah. things. Oh, that could old be, people know things. That might be I was just thinking that. I was like, that could be a good title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> old people know things. That might be a good uh, title. Um, but that's not the point. The point is this: I don't even think you're anxious. I think you're just you're you're like caught in a cycle. Mm-hmm. I think if you just jump out of the the like if you just jump off the merry-go-round, it'll keep going without you, and you can walk away from it. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I, I don't honestly think this is a heavy lift for you. You're not um I don't I don't know the any of the technical terms I'm about to use. I might get these words wrong, but you're not clinically something. You're socially something. And I've been influenced to be this way, but I'm not actually this way. I really think that might be true. Yeah. Of more people than just you, by the way, but about you oh, yeah. specifically. Mm-hmm. because you see it like Facebook's an interesting place, right? Where people yeah. like they want to be upset and then they want to make other people upset. I expect mm-hmm. they want everyone to feel upset. So everyone feels the same, you know, then they mask it with things like I know the right way to live and you don't know, and you're ruining the world. Meanwhile, no one's ruining the world with their decisions. Like it just, it's not working that way. Um, but everybody feels that way. And then they have to attach this incredible, certainty um to to what it is they're denigrating like if this person does x then y will definitely happen i have to stop them they they make themselves powerful and they get this confusion that like social media means they have power i want to tell you something carly I'll, i'll be serious for a second i have a certain amount of social media sway okay Mm -hmm. and i am powerless on social media and I, I tell you that to say that if if you if you are a person with a Facebook page and ninety or three hundred friends, and you think that putting your thoughts on that page are going to change something in the world, you're so wrong. It's incredible. There's a something in advertising called the rule of tens. Mm-hmm. So you have to reach a thousand people to get a hundred people to even consider doing something that so that ten of them will click, so that one of them will follow through. You're, you're right. not influencing anybody, okay? Right. Now, what you do is you make people upset, you make people think you're a problem, then you make division, and then people love the division. They love to be on a team, right? I'm mm-hmm. team 
uh, vaccine, your team not vaccine. I'm team red, your team blue. I'm team Packers, your team Vikings. It doesn't matter. Like people want to mm-hmm. be on a team. They want to like they want to fight for like justice and and they want to and they want to be on the winning side. That's what happens next. That's the real fear of being on a team is that you want your team to win no matter what. And for some reason, your team is being upset. Right. You, you want to be upset and you need to be upset because that's winning. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Right. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Now, <laughs> what are we going to do now that we have all this free time? We don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to sit around with mom yelling about, did you hear what happened? And you don't have to be on the news going, Oh my God, this is the next thing I need to be worried about. Like, like now that none of that's happening for you, what are you going to do with all your free time? I don't know. Like I'm going to be happy. Like I'm going to be at peace. <laughs> I would imagine you'll be happy and at peace. That's yep. a good thing. And you'll probably mm-hmm. be able to take much better care of yourself without worrying about it. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you're good at it already. There's nothing to worry about. Because you have, and, you know, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, no, want no go. Go. <laughs> I want you to go. Oh, okay. I was just going to say like with the Dexcom too now, like having like no choice but to look at all this information, it makes it less scary. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Like I, I see it all in front of me and I'm like, oh, it's not that scary. Like this is just like information that's going to benefit me, mm. you know? Yeah. Are yeah. you and you, like here you say you have a struggle with overeating on low blood sugars. I've been working on that since I emailed you about it. Like I think when I was listening to your podcast too, like I was, I remember like you would say like, you know, like you don't need to eat 15 grams of carbs to fix a low. Like you might only need like five carbs to just bring you back up, you know? Yeah. Like. Because you told your whole life, 15 grams of carbs when you're low. But, like, not every low needs 15 grams of carbs. So that's interesting. But I've been kind of taking that into account, too. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you had a fear based on some bad input. And then it took one person to tell you, maybe don't worry about that. And then you went, all right, I won't worry about that. And now that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like, so instead of eating the whole fruit snack pack, I'll eat, like, two as or three of the need. little fruit snack pack right. things, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a certain, if you're if you're fighting a low, yeah. there's a certain amount of carbs that will fix the low and stop you from going higher. And there's a certain mm-hmm. amount of carbs that won't fix the low, and there's a certain amount of carbs that will fix the low, and then all of a sudden it's not, you're not managing a low anymore, you're now eating. And yeah. eating needs insulin. And to be able to figure out the difference between the three of those takes a little bit of effort, but once you get it figured out, then you're good. It's not always 15 yeah. grams. 15 grams for 15 minutes and 15 minutes is something that was told to people back before there were CGMs, back before there was good even meter technology. They were literally mm-hmm. saying, if you're getting low, if you feel dizzy, oh my God, eat a bunch of food so you don't die. Yeah. But that's not the world that most people live in anymore. Mm-mm. And you don't live in that world, but you're still acting like you do. Yeah, because like anytime I felt like like this is I I like I said I've been working on it, but like when I would feel low, especially if it was like an overnight low, mm-hmm. oh god, it was like a reason to like binge. Like I would just like I would eat so many carbs because I felt so shitty and I or crappy, and I would just keep. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> I'm laughing because how you started it, you're like, I'm just going to say S, and then here I am, and yeah. I, I apologize. Can everything um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I would, it would be, like, a reason to just, like, eat a bunch of stuff at once, and then, like, when I wasn't taking care of myself and not, like, I would, if I went low in the middle of the night, and who sees and say if it was a real low, because I never checked. I just felt low, which probably meant I was in range. I'm not lying. Like, what, like low, like for a while, like I know you've talked about this on the podcast too, but like, like when I started to like make a change in my health, like my diabetes, like a low. So I started feeling low when I was completely in range yeah. because I, like my body was like coming off of that. Like, Oh, you like, you're, you're not high, but you're not low, but you feel low. Um, so that was hard to kind of push through, but it did go away after like a couple of weeks. Good but, for you. Um, yeah, that's yeah. excellent work. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. You said you managed on how you felt, which I always, Arden's like, I feel fine. I was like, Arden, if how you felt was important, then Dexcom wouldn't exist. So why don't, right. why don't we test and make sure? Why don't we look at your CGM and make sure? That, that's right. There, and there are way too many people out there doing that. Like, oh, yeah. I just, I, because in the beginning, they probably feel 
crappy when they're high and then yep. they think they understand it or they feel dizzy when they're low. And then by the way, then your body gets used to being high. You don't feel it anymore. And some people, yeah. some people have like a un- low unawareness too. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm glad that I don't have low unawareness. Like I still do feel low and I'll wake up in the middle of the night from a low, but like, yeah. Oh my God. Like I just think about like how when, like when I was doing that, like being like, I feel fine. I was probably high. Um, and like, you I was, anyway. I would eat. Yeah. And I would just eat and I'd be like, I'm fine. And so good. that was your um, excuse to eat a bunch of food and not do yeah. anything about it, which is what you, yeah. which, which was really your happy place, which was not having to worry about your diabetes. Exactly. Right. Like, like just being like, yeah, just not caring in the moment. Well, we're going to yeah. make your happy place. You being healthy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, let me ask you a question about this boy that you married. Um, do yeah. You, do you tell him all this? Does he know all about this? Um, to an extent, like he's, he's, he was aware, like what we, we'd been dating like for years before, like we got married and like, I think like for the majority of our, like when I was dating him, like I wasn't like diabetes is not important to me. Um, until this past year, um, and I think he's seen like a change too. And like, he's watched me like put a lot more effort into it. Um, he's always been involved in it. Like I like talking to him about it and he actually, he's kind of crazy. He's, he's, he is the cleanest person. I'm not joking. Like he is so clean and organized, but like his favorite thing to do, which is my least favorite thing to do. is like making sure that all my supplies are like organized and like my kit is stocked and like everything is good. Like my prescriptions are filled. Everything's fine. I've never been good at that. Do you want me to, but he loves doing that. Do you want me to ask him what his parents did to him? <laughs> I already know what his parents did to him. His parents are very much the same, very organized and clean and stuff. So that's definitely how he was raised. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with <laughs> or, being or I'm organized. just kind of like, nothing wrong oh, with being no, organized. Not at all. That's fine. Nothing oh, nothing at all. It works for us too because he was laughing because like now we have a house together and he's like, you know, if it's ever messy in here, it's great because no one will ever blame me. It'll They'll know it's you. And I'm like, you're right. Well, because <laughs> everybody knows he's clean. All but right, yeah, so he's... I don't want you living a lie with this boy. Okay, so no, no, and and it, and and I think now if you go back to him and tell him about all this anxiety stuff, he's gonna feel like maybe he was sold what they call a bill of goods. So we don't want him to. Go, we don't want you to think. We don't want him to feel like that. So we'll just we'll just make this stuff go away, and it's like it never happened. You understand? <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, you know what's funny too is that my dad always joked about that when he married my mom. He had no idea how anxious she was until after they got married. Right, that's (laughs) that's false advertising. You understand that, Carl? Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Okay, and I'm sure your your that boy is lying to you about something right now too. So let's figure out what that is, okay, and get him to fix it. (laughs) But hopefully he's not outside like killing small animals with sticks or something weird like that, right? Oh God, I. I hope not. We're getting a dog soon. A dog? Wouldn't it be weird (laughs) if it ended up being a mass murder? (laughs) You were killed in the shooting that he... What the heck? (laughs) Oh my god. Now now when I get out of here, I'm going to look at him like... Stare at him. I am just screwing with you. He is not going to... (laughs) He is not going to... uh, uh, enact a mass shooting and, and make you one of the victims. I was just teasing you because of everything we talked about. He'll probably push you in the ocean where you'll be killed by a shark. So There we go. You're landlocked, right? You're like in the middle of that, that big ice pack. I got, I, yeah, we don't have any oceans near us. We have lots of lakes. Have you ever seen no the ocean oceans. up uh, in person? I have. I've only, <laughs> I've only been in the ocean a couple times and one of the times was when we went on vacation to South Carolina with my mom was there and she was petrified of letting us go past our like knees mm-hmm. <laughs> because of sharks. <laughs> she sounds like a big fun time, your mom. Oh, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> gonna leave my wife right now and go try to steal your mom away from your dad so I can have a big party with her. <laughs> um you're terrific, Carly. I hope you know that. Oh, thanks. Is there um, anything that we haven't you. talked about that you wish we would have? No, I I just wanted to like thank you for the podcast because I I love this. I'm so glad I discovered it when I did too because it was like obviously the email that I sent you I think was in January or February and that was like right at the beginning of when I started to kind of like really dedicate myself and know and like tell myself this is the last time I'm gonna like 
you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to fall out of this path again and I haven't yet. So it's been going good, good but yeah, your, your podcast is great. I listen to it um, every morning on my way to work and at my desk sometimes. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I told you in the email, I started listening to them like from the newest going down, but then I realized that's not really the best way to do it. So I'm in, I've been listening from the first on, so I'm in like the 300s now. Um, do I get better at it as I, you're going? It's cool to listen to, especially the audio quality. Like you do get better at it. Like I'm like, wow, this is great. This sounds awesome. Yeah, I am. <laughs> like I, got, I figured quality. out the audio better, and I think I'm better at it in general. Um, but yeah, yeah, the audio bothers me. I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known. Oh no, what to do? It's the not beginning. that bad. I know it's not. It's bad. not that bad. No, I understand it's not bad, yeah. but it's so crystal clear now, right? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, it's great. So I wish um, I knew that back then. That's one of my regrets. Um, Oh, is it? Yeah, but don't, you know, don't regret it. But do you know, Carly, I never think about it. <laughs> oh, that's good. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's, it, I love, I love, honestly, I don't know why I brought that up. I I, I really wanted to tell you that I love the podcast. Mm. And yeah, and you're great. Um, well, that's yeah. nice. I, I'm glad that it's helping you. I, I really do. I, I hope that everybody gets something out of it who tries it. Um, I'm going to ask you another question again that I've asked already in the past. No weed for you? <laughs> um you just don't want to sometimes to i it? do yeah 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 <laughs> okay sometimes. i think i i think maybe using it more often would be <laughs> yeah carly because you're going at like 200 miles an hour in your brain oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, all, all the time do you slow down with the weed yes mm-hmm. i do okay mm-hmm. well i would like i don't think you should be doing drugs okay but no of you course might not. try those breathing things more often Mm-hmm. The big breath in, it hold it, blow it out. It's very helpful. Mm-hmm. It just, it just, it's centering. I do it. It's very centering. Kind of slows Absolutely. your, kind of slows your heart down a little bit. Because I thought when we started talking that you were speaking this quickly because you were nervous, but it never stopped. Oh no! <laughs> like you speak like a thousand. Like I'm, I'm slowing myself down to balance you out. Did you know that? I'm like. I'm like dreading listening to myself. Well, you were great. Oh, oh, Carly, stop for a second. You, you don't <laughs> misunderstand what a podcast is, okay? Hopefully, right. you got something out of this. Absolutely. If you didn't, it doesn't matter to me because everyone who hears it is going to get something out of it. You're going to have done a really nice thing for people because there Do you are, think so? Do oh you my, think people will relate me? to me? Oh, I think oh, okay. your problem is paramount right now in society. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 this is probably the longest you've gone without looking at your phone in five years. I feel outed right now. Talk, talking to <laughs> totally me. Totally right is. Now, right? Yeah. Yeah. My wife asked me this morning about my job. She's like, do you ever like dread making the podcast? And I said, there are times when I have to edit the show that I think, oh, I, I, I don't want to do this because it's, mm-hmm. I have to go back and re-listen on a different level. Like I'm not really listening for what we're saying. I'm listening for noise and pauses and gaps. And I'm like, I'm, I'm cleaning it up. Right. And That's I'm setting tedious. up the file to do what I told you about earlier to put the bumpers on and the, et cetera. It's the, it's the background stuff to it. I don't, and I don't hate it. I just, there are some times I'm like, Oh, this is, it's kind of tedious for me. Mm-hmm. And she said, what about interviewing people? And I said, Oh no, that's the best part of my life. Like, so right. like, like what I, I so enjoyed our conversation. Like I, oh, I really um, did. And I'm glad because I was anxious about that too before we started. I'm like, I don't even know are. why I'm going on here. Like, what am I going to talk about? Like, I'm not interesting. I'm just another person with diabetes. You're not interesting. <laughs> oh, Carly, 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 Carly. You are very interesting for two reasons. Here, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, people who feel okay. like you, I hope, are going to be helped by this. And people right. who don't feel like you are probably like, oh my god, this poor girl. Because you're you're, because you're tortured and you don't even know it, right? You know what I mean. And and but I think now that you see it, like somebody's pointed it out to you, I think I think you could pretty easily walk away from it. Mm -hmm. I want to hear back from you. Okay. Would you you email me after (laughs) a a week of not listening to the news? Would you email me? Yes, I will. I'm not saying you have to start today, although you should. (laughs) <laughs> and, but 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 after for seven days you have not consumed any media news, send me an email and tell me how you're feeling. I'm gonna go on 
Instagram and Twitter, and I'm gonna unfollow all the news outlets that, that I follow. I think I think Twitter is probably very bad for you. I think you should consider mm-hmm. the this something that you cut out for a week as well. Yeah, Twitter is not good for you're you. Not, I can't I can't yeah, imagine not. it's good for you. That's just where people <laughs> argue with each other. Yeah, that's news without the stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know you know you know what I do like. I like TikTok. I hate to admit it, but I do. There's a lot of cute dogs on there. Is that That's what, what you, my feed is. Is that what your TikTok looks like? Yeah, just cute dogs. I just got the TikTok because I have some oh, content that I think uh, for the podcast that are, is going to go oh. up on it um, soon. That's exciting. Yeah, and um, I don't like I don't consume the TikTok thing. Like I don't go through the mm-hmm. thing. I do notice yeah. though when my kids are using it that TikTok just appears to be girls making their breasts and butt jump up and down. <laughs> oh my god! That's all the TikTok looks like to me. Right. <laughs> like my daughter even said to me, she goes, girls are just flat out not even wearing bras anymore. They're just putting on t-shirts okay. and bouncing. And it's like, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you'll be on it and you're like, I can't believe this is allowed on here. <laughs> like, it seems, are there no like guidelines? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. TikTok to me seems like porn where people leave their clothes on and don't quite get to the sex. Yeah. 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 So, it definitely is. <laughs> probably, it definitely is. Am, am I getting it right? I think you are. I <laughs> think you've got it dead on. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but anyway, I back to this was incredibly valuable. I think it was valuable for you. You'll let me know. But I definitely mm-hmm. think it was valuable for other people. Now, some people might just think I'm a pompous, like, blowhard. But that's fine. They can not listen or listen and hate me. I, by the way, if you're listening and you hate me, as long as you're downloading it, I don't care. <laughs> True, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why are you listening if you hate me? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's all good. But um. But I, I mean, I, I, I listen. I don't know everything, but this seems pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. You're you're caught in a in a in a fear spiral. Like you just need to step mm-hmm. out of it. That's all. Mm-hmm. So good luck. Well, I, <laughs> I appreciate all your all your assistance, and I'm actually excited to listen back on this. So maybe I'll like I'll listen to it and I'll take notes. That you you got to stop taking so, much so that time. way. I no stop taking yeah. notes, Carly. This isn't look, no. You, you need me to go over it. It's not hard. Okay. No. <laughs> you're 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 putting yourself in situations where you're allowing yourself to consume things and see things that make you upset because you like being upset because that's how you grew up. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. And if you stop doing it and go focus on your relationship with your husband and build a new different life where people aren't upset all the time, then you'll start liking that. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's no more or less to it than that. Wow. Life is really easy, Carly. It 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 is. It yes. doesn't have to be so hard. It's super easy. Now listen, if you're living in an uh, an alleyway and you don't have a job, it's not easy. But you have yeah. a house or an igloo, whatever you live in, and you yeah. you know, there's some boy there that cares about you, you care about him. He's cleaning the place for you. Probably cooking too. Isn't he? No. I do more of the cooking. I'm more of the cooking. Of the cooking. All right, so you're cooking. He's cleaning. <laughs> you're both paying for the place. You're going to get a dog, which, by the way, huge mistake, but I don't want to get into it right now. And so <laughs> and, and you're together. You're trying to build a life together. Try to find that motivating. Try to find it, Try right. to find happiness in happiness, not happiness in craziness. That's all this is. Yeah. There's nothing more or less to it than that. Here, here. Spend less money than you make. Okay. Mm-hmm. Save yep. some. All right. Do your best to save 10% of what you make in the beginning when you're younger. Mm-hmm. If you're if your jobs offer you 401k plans, put as much into them as you can. Never think about it again. Just do it. Okay. okay? Try to buy okay. things. Stay away from credit when you can. That's it. It's gonna be fine. You, the way you just said that is, I think, I think my dad has said the same thing to me. So when he listens to this, he's going to be like, this guy's great. He knows what he's talking about. Your poor father. Oh my God. (laughs) I haven't mentioned him once because I feel terribly for him. I imagine him just standing in a corner going like, holy crap, these two won't stop. And like, (laughs) and he's just like, oh my, it's too late to leave. You know what I mean? Like I've been doing it too long. And uh, do you have other brothers and sisters? I have I have a sister and a brother. Are, yeah. they, are they they do they do this stuff too or no? <laughs> okay, well the young my brother he's the youngest. 
he's anxious like me, but he smokes a lot of weed, so he's got it. He's got it good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, my sister's anxious, but she's not. She's got. I think she's. You know. Yeah. No, we're all anxious. Your we're dad, all a little bit but your dad's up. not, right? My dad is not anxious at all. Yeah, like when I he talks that. about anxiety, yeah, he's like, I don't even know what that feels like, right. and I'm like. <laughs> No, I knew that because he's the one that went to the endo appointments with you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, don't exactly. worry. I had this whole thing figured out for like the last hour and 10 minutes now. But that's not the <laughs> point. So, so yeah. So, I've I've literally, if he's listening, sir, God bless you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd have went out for I a pack wait. of smokes and not come back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for him to hear this. I got to oh get some God. milk. I'll be right back. Oh my god. Then he would have went yeah. to some tattoon or wherever those other places are that you live. There is a Saskatoon, <laughs> right? I think so. You think so? That's bad that I that's bad that I don't know. I think there is. Terrible it's Canadian. Saskatchewan. It's a ter- Saskatoon. You're a terrible Canadian. Have you ever even stabbed anyone? Never. Oh my god. Kind of I've Canadian. never even like what what's something I I've never even I've never skied or snowboarded either. Do you love the Oki? Do you love it when they, they put the biscuit in the basket or do you not even care about that? What is that? Hockey. You do hockey? Oh, I don't. I didn't know what you were saying. I know hockey. I don't play hockey, and yeah. I've never been to a an NHL NHL game. Right. I almost said NFL. We're gonna <laughs> like, call this episode Carly's poor father. <laughs> That's a great title. Yeah, I don't know what this is gonna be called. It's gonna take me a while to figure okay. this out. All right, Carly, I want you to get started on your new life. Start today, okay? I'm excited. Name two apps Thank you you're so gonna much. take off your phone right now. Tell me two apps you're taking off your phone. Two apps, two whole apps. Yeah, you're gonna just take them off oh your phone right now. God, oh, Twitter, I don't even know. Twitter, Maybe Twitter. Say Twitter. I should. I should take Twitter, Twitter. off. Twitter. Okay. What else? I. Sh- I, sh- got any, I don't know. Got any news apps on there. I don't think I have any. No. Yeah, I do. I have the Apple News app. I'll uh, get rid of that too. Yeah, get rid of Apple News app, or just uh, shut off mm-hmm. the um the what's his name's the notifications too for that stuff. Yes. Oh, you're probably Maybe. the notifications you probably love, right? They probably light up the oh. pleasure center. Yeah, my eyes start to glisten when they happy. come up. You're like, oh, yeah. something, oh, some, something bad's it. happening. <laughs> something bad's <laughs> happening. I wonder if a bunch of people got killed. Let me look. Oh, they did. Mom, did you hear? Oh, boy. All right, Carly. I can't fix you any more than this. I've done all I can do. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Hold on one second. A huge thanks to Carly for coming on the show and having this great conversation. I'd also like to thank Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor, and remind you to go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. In kind, let me also thank the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. And again, remind you about the link, ContourNext.com forward slash juice box. Now, there are links right in your podcast player in the show notes or you can find them at juiceboxpodcast.com. When you click on my links or use them when you type them into the browser, that really does support the show. And here's one more that you can use. Touchedbytype1.org. This was a pretty long one, so let me just say thank you. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate when you leave those great ratings and reviews in your podcast app and when you tell other people about the show. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.